We think that the Antarctic ice sheets are less well known than the oceans of the world. In order to understand how our planet works and the climate signals on our planet, it's important to understand what happened in the past. What RAID will allow us to do is to uncover the secrets of the Earth's history that are buried in the ice sheet itself, as well as the largely unexplored continent underneath. RAID stands for the Rapid Access Ice Drill. It's mainly meant to cut a borehole rapidly and get us to the deeper parts of the ice sheet. So the, the goal from the standpoint of glaciology and paleoclimate is to be able to uh, use it as a reconnaissance tool to find where the old ice is. So a borehole is literally a window uh, into another world uh, and into the past. And we can probe this world from the borehole using a variety of techniques. One thing we can do is we can use lasers and light sensors to map the dust in the ice and reconstruct the Earth's history that's preserved there. And we can identify uh, deep ice deposits that have been preserved for millions of years. And then we know to go back to that point on the map and retrieve uh, a deep ice core. The RAID provides a platform for quickly making an access hole through two miles of ice faster than any other drilling platform. We also need technologies that can be very agile to deploy in, in circumstances where you need to get in and out in a week or two. A typical ice core takes five years. RAID can do it in 48 hours to drill 3,000 meters down to the bed of an ice sheet. And what really spurred the, the creation of RAID was that we want to push the existing ice core record, which is 800,000 years, back to 1.5 million. And the reason why scientists are interested in that is that the ice ages came and went uh, with a very different beat back then, uh, 41,000 year beat, whereas in the last 900,000 years or so, they have come and gone with a, a 100,000 year beat. Nobody's been able to explain why that changed. And this, this might have important implications for our future. I think one of the biggest challenges is that it's unlikely that we're going to get continuous records going that far back in very many places. So a RAID is really powerful in that you can rapidly penetrate through the ice sheet and create multiple boreholes in a single season. And I think that's going to be really fundamental to understanding the nature of, of these ice core records and also some of their limitations. Deployment of RAID will really add a lot of value to the understanding of oldest ice and how we access it. It can also really aid to our understanding because it can drill rock cores from beneath two miles of ice of what is in the Antarctic lithosphere for a geology problem. The second major driver is to be able to sample what we call the geosphere, the solid part of the Earth uh, below the ice sheet so we can learn about how the landscape evolved under the ice, what is its relationship to former continental neighbors like Australia and Africa. Even North America was once adjacent to Antarctica in the, in the, in the deep geologic past. But when we think about the future of global warming and problems like sea level rise, we don't really know yet how much heat is coming up from below the Earth that has the potential to melt the ice sheet from below and cause very rapid loss of, of ice, which would then have a direct influence on sea level. So we're trying to answer some fundamental questions that I think a lot of societies around the world are concerned about. The transition zone between ice and rock, there's a, there's a little layer of very interesting uh, sediments, probably mud, that is incredibly understudied right now. And yet the people who are uh, predicting future sea level rise, they desperately want to know, you know, about this mud layer that's at the base of the glacier. So there's gonna be, we think, a lot of uh, fruitful collaboration. Some of the most interesting questions about Antarctica and about the ice sheets in general fall in kind of this interdisciplinary space. And I think that's kind of where 
I'm excited as an early career scientist, and I think others are as well, is, is this potential to address these new interesting questions. Different scientists will have different opinions on the best place to drill, the best use of this limited resource. So it will come down to a competition of ideas. Which scientific questions are the most compelling in deciding where to drill? So it's an exciting problem to have. The ability for people from different disciplines to work together and provide the access to boreholes in Antarctica and be able to work on samples that we can retrieve is gonna be a very shared experience in the future.